Hey there, Internet. Welcome to the Hard On Gear channel, where I discuss and review my use and abuse knives and gear. So on the table right now, I have a spread of EDC fixed blades, one of which you'll notice is not mine. This is the CRKT Seawee, uh, borrowed from a buddy of mine who just picked this up as kind of his all-around, uh, all-purpose army fixed blade that he plans on using for uh, everything he's going to need a knife for in the next little bit. So uh, Seawee, named after uh, the guy who designed it and the guy who helped him kind of finish tweaking the design from what I remember in the video. It is about seven and a half inches, a little bit less than that overall length, three inch and four, 3.4 inch blades, something like that. At some point, maybe I grab one of these myself and do a full review on it. But for now, just gonna give you my first impression on it and talk about how it kind of measures up compared to some of these other EDC fixed blades I have on the table right now. Columbia River Knife and Tool Company has this line of, I think, Wharf, Warforged, Forged by War. One of the two of those is kind of the uh, series of uh, veteran design knives that they're doing. This is one of those. Uh, designed is pretty much what my buddy is picking it up for. Uh, military slash EDC slash tactical slash maybe defensive combative knife if it came to it, but more just kind of a beater I think you could use around the woods or around the shop. Messing around with all kinds of uh, stuff where you're doing things with knives that probably shouldn't be done. But this, as you can see, has got a hell of thick blade stock, thicker than what do I have here for a good comparison. Uh, the Azula 2 is pretty much a pry bar with a blade, but the SK5 steel of this uh, seaweed blades probably about twice the freaking width pretty good size comparison seaweed's a little bit larger than the azula 2 while we've cut the rest of these out why don't we just do this whole size comparison thing bradford guardian 3 almost same blade shape and just about the same size a little bit smaller don't let that paracord ball fool you it kind of makes it look a little bit bigger than it is but uh yeah seaweed's a pretty decent size fixed blade about the large end of anything that you're going to want to be edc uh, fixed blade carrying. Uh, wow. Anything larger than that, you're going to have an issue appendix carrying, scout carrying, or any kind of a small carry on the hip. Anything bigger, and you're pretty much going to end up doing something like a hip carry or dangle carry. I've tried appendix carrying the uh, Tor Anaconda here, and it's just a little bit too long and wide, and it's always poking out. So uh, I haven't tried appendix or scout carrying this thing. When my buddy handed it to me, he had put it on a tech lock already, and I've been uh, carrying it around on my shorts, funny enough, because the tech lock works just fine on sweatpants or shorts, just clipping it over the top, doing the same thing with uh, the Ulti clip on this Tor Anaconda, which pretty much never leaves my side. And by the way, a little teaser, anything look different about this Tor Anaconda? Comment away down below if you happen to notice what's different about that tour anaconda i'll talk about that at some point i'll do an update on this knife because i've had this thing for well over a year now so give a little update a little maybe uh one long term or kind of a mid long term review on this thing but anyways comment below feel free to give the video a like while you're down there if you don't mind let's just see the anaconda next to the seaweed anaconda is still a pretty big boy but uh there you go there's the seaweed compared to most of my fixed blades we'll just pull the mill spy elite and the uh gerber go strike out just to finish that off yeah, kind of in the middle of a lot of the stuff that I'll have on my hip 99% of the time. A little bit thicker, definitely heavier. Uh, the skeletonized handles or the uh, micarta on the Azula 2, pretty light. I don't think this thing's more than maybe three ounces. Now, for the extra couple ounces of weight, you do get uh, what is a gigantic hunk of steel. The SK5 is maybe not quite 1095. I don't want to call it the poor man's 1095 because that's pretty damn similar and it's just slightly different qualities and properties, but... Uh, I prefer 1095, probably always will. The only SK5 I have is in my Cold Steel SRK, which is not on me right now. Not actually a huge fan of that knife, the proportions, the weight distribution, and all that. This, on the other hand, I very much like the way it's balanced, the ergonomics and everything. The balance point's pretty damn heavy towards the handle, actually, just because of how thick that blade stock is. Looks to be the same thickness all the way through until you get to the end of that big old drop point. It does taper down and get a little bit thinner towards the tip, so it would penetrate. It will get into stuff if you're prying and you need to get, uh, I don't know, even just into some wood or under something to pry and twist. Not that you should with your knives, but this thing could probably handle it. Uh, yeah gets thin enough that you can get in there, but it's certainly not a slicey blade. As a bit of a high secondary grind, I just kind of touched it up and got it popping off here pretty nicely. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, the factory edge was pretty good, but he just wanted a little extra touch up on it. I will say the only downside of putting a fine edge on a knife kind of beat, uh, built more to beat around the bush is if you do end up chopping or hacking, you're more likely to chip that fine edge off. Although something like SK5 or 1095 high carbon should roll instead of chip, but we'll see what happens because I'm sure he'll get to use this against a, a bunch of hard objects, maybe some metal on metal that he shouldn't be using it for, but I know sometimes doing the uh, inventory stuff, you end up 
doing terrible things to your knives that I won't repeat on this channel. There's all the hairs on the table from the shaving. Uh, so the handle ergonomics are pretty unique on this. A lot of finger grooves and uh, just even up top here, there's kind of cutouts for where your hand can slide in. I don't know if it's going to fit everyone's hand quite too, uh, quite the same, but for my hand, which is kind of a lower end of a size large, I don't know, there's always pretty much somewheres here where my fingers slip into naturally. Not quite as smooth as something a little more universal like the Azula 2, which I do find a lot more comfortable, but you're definitely not losing this thing. It's a G10 handle scales on the outside. Pretty easy to pull off with what looks like T10 uh, torque screws. Let me just look on this Manix 2. Oh wait, that's a Manix 2 lightweight. Where'd that come from? Uh, that'll be next week's video because now I just happen to have something to match this full size, uh, full weight Manix 2, which I don't know if it's gonna get a whole lot of pocket time anymore because this thing is pretty freaking sweet at about, I think half the weight. Uh, so yeah, Manix 2 lightweight, which does not have the same pivot screw I was looking for, T8. Yeah, for the Manix pivots, in case I said that wrong. And, uh, ooh, yeah, T10 for the Siwi. So I gotta imagine the cutting performance of this is gonna be something similar to the Top Smell Spy Elite. Just about the same thickness of blade stock and uh, just about the same width of blade. A little bit longer distance to travel to the cutting edge for the tops. Uh, not a super slicey knife, but this thing still works quite well, like whittling away wood and doing like little food prep and stuff. A uh, little different ergonomics, more similar to the forward curve of the Azula 2 for the Siwi. Still uh, probably a little bit heavier than what it needs to be. And if I can get away with carrying something half the weight and doing pretty much all the same stuff in the Azula 2, which I'm a way bigger fan of, and to me the handle ergonomics are way better anyways, maybe I'm going to stick with the Azula 2. However, uh, price of the Siwi in Canadian, around 100 and. $25, I think, something like that on Amazon, and around $75 US, so a little bit cheaper. Uh, Zula 2 coming in at around, I think, $150 Canadian, so $25 bucks more. Uh, but yeah, $75 US, $125, somewhere in that ballpark Canadian for the Siwi at this time, uh, the end of 2022. Uh, the sheath, really quickly, is just kind of a basic Kydex, uh, GRN, F FRN. I can never really tell the difference. I'm pretty sure on the video uh, CRKT put out, they said it was Kydex. I'll take their word for it. All kinds of different holes uh, riveted in and the other little strap loops here in different spots. You can mount this just about anywhere. The tech lock's kind of a nice addition as normal a tech, knock, tech lock or ulti clip kind of allows you to mount this thing anywhere. And if you want to slap it in and off of uh, kit, molly webbing, anything like that, there's different uh, connectors and different things you can use to uh, make that work pretty easy with the tech lock or just use the ulti clip and slide it on and off. But yeah, uh, got a few of these kicking around somewhere. I don't know if they're even here uh, with me right now, but I uh, played around with them a little bit. They're a little bit large. The ulti clip to me has kind of won that battle, but tech locks are pretty good to go. Uh, yeah, like I said, I've been carrying this around on my hips, just on my uh, just gym shorts all day, and it's been super comfy. Obviously a little, little bit heavy, I believe 5.6 ounces, Pretty sure that's the weight of the knife itself. Feels like that's definitely in the ballpark. I know the Manix 2, where did I just put that? Probably right in front of me, yep. Is 5.1 ounces and whew, yeah, right in the same ballpark. I'll uh, play around with this thing a little bit more here and just kind of feel around the ergos before I hand it back to my friend here, buddy. I think he's going in the field this week. So he's gonna want that sometime in the next couple hours. So appreciate him letting me uh, borrow this. He also was the fellow who let me use that uh, Leatherman OHT. So appreciate the lend outs as always from the buddies here in the army while I'm uh, able to get my hands on a whole bunch of knives that I don't have to pay for myself. Again, appreciate hitting that stupid like button. As always, I hate plugging it, but it does help. Keep an eye out for the update on the Tor Anaconda, which yeah, looks a little bit different, but what is it? Thank you once more. It's Hard On Gear Channel signing off.